all praises is due to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, master of the day of judgment. It is unto him whom we ultimately bow, giving honor in all of their due places. Now, today we want to talk about Saul, the enemy of God. And I'm going to prove it to you from your very own Bible that Saul, B.K.A. Paul, is the only man, according to Scripture, that God Almighty calls an enemy. Now, let's start in Genesis, where this all began. This is going to be Genesis 49. Judah. Thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Notice the word neck. That's going to come up later. Judah's hand is going to be in his enemy's neck. And Judah is going to be praised. And, not only that, thy father's children is going to bow before you, Judah. Who is Judah? This is all a metaphor. And I'm going to prove to you that this is talking about the father. This is talking about the father God. Why? Because God never shares his glory. God never shares his praise. So therefore, this is only God the Father returning in the regeneration. Okay? And that will be in Exodus 20, 3, 4 through 5. We'll come back to that. Let's keep going in verse 10. The scepter shall not depart from Judah nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Verse 11, binding his foal unto the vine and his ass coat unto the choice vine. He washed his garments in wine and in his clothes in the blood of grapes. Now, this is all talking about God the Father returning to earth. Okay, because now God the Father has to judge and he has to reestablish the law again, making a new covenant in his own body. And he will restart the 12 tribes of Israel from his loins. And Genesis 49 precepts with Isaiah 49. Now let's go to Isaiah 49. Isaiah 49 and 6. And he said, it is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant. Who is he talking about? Let's back up in verse 5. And now saith the Lord that formed me from the womb to be his servant. So God Almighty is speaking of himself, returning back to earth as a servant. Now watch this. To bring Jacob again to him. What does that mean? He's going to restart the tribes of Israel from his own loins. Going on. Though Israel be not gathered, Israelite camps, Israel is not going to be gathered. Israel is going to be recreated new and afresh. And everybody's going to have halos over their heads. It is a light thing, is it? That thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to be the Gentiles, that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. This is all speaking of Almighty. Because Israel is not going to be gathered. 
and the Lord is going to be glorious in his own eyes. And he's going to restart the tribes of Israel himself. Isaiah 49, it's Genesis 49. And one of the main purposes is to exterminate the tribe of Benjamin. Now let's go to the book of Judges. Where God ordered the hit on the tribe of Benjamin to be wiped out. Okay. Now, this is going to be Judges chapter 20. Let's go to verse 18. And the children of Israel arose and went up to the house of God and asked counsel of God and said, Which of us shall go up first to battle against the children of Benjamin? And the Lord said, Judah shall go up first. Why did he say Judah? Because the Lord is speaking of himself when he would return to earth. And shine the light on Paul being the wolf in sheep clothing. And this is exactly what you see me doing in the people logo. 1 Kings 22, 34. Okay. God ordered a hit on the tribe of Benjamin. And what happened was the tribe of Benjamin was completely wiped out to 400 people. And the people loved their brother, Benjamin. And although they vowed not to give their own daughters to Benjamin, they allowed Benjamin to go inside some virgins. And see, this is what happens. Sometimes somebody is so wicked, even though you love that wicked person, that wicked baby. You just need to take that baby and you just need to dash that baby up against the rocks. That's what you need to do. Because it's going to be a wicked seed. And that's what happened with the tribe of Benjamin. And because the tribe of Benjamin did not get wiped out, they gave us the lie of Christianity. Okay? So therefore... God the Father, the Almighty, Lamonti, Almaty, had to wrap himself in flesh and be the Lamb of Isaiah 53, along with the female witness, who is a woman who will die. Okay? And we both, the Father and the Mother, will die after the prophet Isa. So there you have that. The tribe of Benjamin was supposed to be wiped out. That's why when we go back to Genesis 49. And let's go to verse 8. Judah, thou art he whom thy brother shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. This is speaking of God the Father exposing Paul the wolf in sheep clothing and doing away with the Christian church along with the prophet Isa. When the prophet Isa returned his first job is to destroy the cross. Now let's get a, a metaphor of Judith Chopping the neck of Hollow Fernandez. This is in the Bible, okay? There was a woman by the name of Judith, and she wasn't afraid. And she chopped a man by the name of Hollow Fernandez in the neck. And she had the head of the king in her hands, okay? Now we're going to go to that story. This is going to be in the Apocrypha. This is going to be in the book of Judith. Okay. Let's go over to the book of Judith. And let's go to 
chapter 13, verse 6. Then she came to the pillar of the bed, which was at hollow fur Nez head. Now let me show you something, and then we'll pick back up on this fur. Now this fur is going into the wolf in sheep clothing. Why? Because Pharaoh, get it? Pharaoh, fur. He's a type and shadow of Paul. Why? Because Pharaoh had a son that was considered God, and it's the same thing with Paul, who claimed to be the father and who claimed that Jesus was the son of God. Okay. Also, we have Potiphar. In the days of Joseph, and Joseph was a picture of Jesus. Joseph was put in Potiphar's house. And Potiphar's wife, which is a picture of the Christian church. Now that makes sense. Potiphar Paul. Potiphar's wife, Christian church, was all over Joseph. And Joseph didn't want to have anything to do with her. Okay? So, right there, that's a picture of the man with the hair, the man with the fur, Paul. Okay? So, all of the hollow furnace, Potiphar's, Pharaoh's, and then, remember, Paul called himself what? The father. He's the man with the hair. Okay. He is the man who wanted to be the father. And that's the reason why God himself, who is the real father, said his hands shall be in the neck of his enemies. Now, let's get some scripture. On that. Now this woman just. Smote. His neck. And approached. To his bed. And took hold of the hair of his head. See. Because Paul is the man with the hair. He's the man with the fur. He's Potiphar. And he's going to get it. What? The fire. Fire. See fur. And took hold of the hair of his head. And said strengthen me O Lord God of Israel this day. And she smote twice upon his neck. With all her might. And she took away his head. From him. And tumbled his body down. From the bed. And poured down the canopy. From the pillars. And Adam, after she went forth. And gave hollow furnace his head. To her maid. So this story's twofold. It's a picture of Almaty taking the kingdom from the Christians, and it's a picture of Almaty taking the kingdom from the Arabs. Taking the Kaaba. Get it, canopy? We taking that canopy. I am the thin legged black man that's gonna take it apart stone by stone. Okay, so we just connected the man with the fur, Halifernes, as Paul, the wolf in sheep clothing that Jesus spoke of and warned his disciples about that will come after him. Okay, Paul was the Jacob. Jacob is a metaphor grabbing a hold of Esau's heel. And so, therefore, the father had to come back to earth and be the last Jacob. He had to recreate what, Benjamin? Because Benjamin was gay. Benjamin was a very gay tribe. Benjamin was a Sodom and Gomorrah times five. Benjamin dealt with homosexuality. Okay, and let's get that scripture. This is going to be the book of Judges. Chapter 19. This is the reason why they were exterminated. This is the reason why the people of Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed. 
This is going to be Judges chapter 19 and verse 22. Now, as they were making their hearts merry, behold, the men of the city, certain sons of Baal, he set the house round about. Now, this is the tribe of Benjamin. And beat at the door and spake to the master of the house, the old man saying, Bring forth the man that came into thine house that we may know him. Now, the tribe of Benjamin wanted to gang rape a man. And because they could not get that man, they gang raped his concubine. And that is a picture of the Christian church. And there's coming a day. Let's go to verse 25. But the men would not hearken to him. So the man took his concubine and brought her forth unto them. And they knew her and abused her all the night until the morning. And when the day began to spring, that's the day I'm talking about. That's going into the last day. There's coming a day when Paul will be forced to let go of the Christian church. There's coming the day when Pharaoh will be forced to let God's people go. There's coming the day when even Farrakhan himself will be forced to let God's people go. Okay? I'm not taking no losses from no one and I'm getting everything that belong unto me. So here we have it. We have right here the Christian church under abuse from the teachings of Paul right here in the book of Judges. The tribe of Benjamin all over a man. The teachings of Paul is all over a man. He tells us that he wants all men to be single just like him. That's against the law. Of creation. Even in the book of Jeremiah, it tells us to take wives in the land of our captivity. And Paul was the enemy of God. So I showed you Judah putting his hand in the neck of his enemy. Then I showed you Judith putting her hand in the neck of her enemy. And that is the last two witnesses putting their hands in the neck of all of our enemies round about us. Now let's connect the neck with Paul. First of all, let's start with Benjamin. Let's see if we can find scriptures of Benjamin's neck in the scripture because that is rare. That is very rare. Rare. This is going to be in the book of Genesis 45 and 14. And he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept. And Benjamin wept upon his neck. So here we have in scripture falling upon Paul's neck. Now, the reason why I said it like that, because falling upon someone is a military term in the scriptures, and that is to go and slay someone. And these scriptures are twofold. There's coming a day when the prophet Isa will fall upon the Christian church. Now, some people might say, well, that says Benjamin. That does not say Paul. So let me see if I can connect a scripture in the Bible. Connecting the enemy of God. To his neck. Connecting the enemy of God. In Genesis 49 and 8. Bingo. This is going to be Acts 20 and 37. And they all wept sore and fell on Paul's neck. There you have it again. Paul's neck. I just narrowed it down. 
There's coming a day, and I've already had my hand, okay? And I've had my foot, even the one that was broken in the third and fourth metatorsal, so far up. The wolf in sheep clothing, you know what? It ain't funny. I went through about six months non-stop intensely exposing Paul, digging in the neck of my enemy. So there you have it. Acts 20 and 37. And they all wept sore and fell upon Paul's neck. Now let's get scripture where we can connect Paul as the enemy of God. Okay. This is going to be in the book of Samuel. Let's go to 1 Samuel 28. And the history of what's going on is King Saul, same name as the Saul of the New Testament, has been disqualified from being king because he constantly keeps committing the sin of sacrifice just like the Saul or Paul of the New Testament and the so-called sacrifice of Jesus. Now you got to study this on your own. But Paul whose name is Saul, really, is the same as the Saul in the Old Testament. They both are guilty of the sin of sacrifice. And right now, God is not speaking to Saul no more at all. And because God is not talking to him no more, now he is going to go and talk to a witch. He started off killing witches. Now he's trying to go and talk to witches. Don't that sound familiar? Paul started off killing Christians. But now he's the father of the Christians. Okay? So let's get that scripture. This is going to be 1 Samuel 28. And let's go to verse 14. And when he said unto her, What form is he of? And she said, An old man cometh up, and he is covered with a mantle. And Saul perceived that it was a mantle, and, and Saul perceived that it was Samuel. And he stooped with his face to the ground and bowed himself. And Samuel said to Saul, Why hast thou disquieted me to bring me up? And Saul answered and said, I am sore distressed, for the Philistines make war against me. And God has departed from me and answer me no more, neither by prophets nor by dreams. Therefore have I called thee, that thou mayest make known unto me what shall I do. Now, that's a wrong move. Think about it. Think about it. Okay? We're talking about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He quit talking to you. How could anybody else help you? And that's the problem with Christianity. That's why the man who is doing this is Saul. Because it's the same thing with the Saul of the New Testament has been doing in Christianity. Going on. Then said Samuel, Wherefore then dost thou ask of me, seeing the Lord is departed from you and is become thine enemy? Whoa, there you go. I have it right here in Scripture. King Saul was an enemy of God. Because he was a picture of the real enemy of God who's done worse than him. And that is the apostate Paul. And you can't deny it, okay? Because the shoe fits. The shoe fits. Even the witch was afraid of Saul because he used to kill witches. 
Okay? That's why when she found out he was Saul, she said, you deceived me. And that's what the Christians going to say in the lake of fire. Because when Paul came around, they was afraid of him because Paul used to kill the Christians. Same thing with Saul. But then, he was a CI. Okay? Okay? He had a badge number. And he had a prison with his name on it in the Arabic tongue, Bulas, waiting for him in hell. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the real truth.